One nation has been caught trying to undermine our gun laws in cahoots with America's NRA. It's a new low for Australian politics, but it may not be low enough for our government to put it last on its ticket at the election. This is why preferences matter. You make this shit happen, mate. I'll make sure we open any door you need open. Today, One Nation has been busted seeking cash from the NRA in the US to beef up their political campaigns. In exchange, they promised to dismantle our gun laws. It would win potentially balance of power if we took two seats in the lower house. Today, the PM condemned One Nation, but still hasn't committed the Libs to officially putting One Nation last on their How to Vote cards. There are many candidates for who should go last. And you won't know all those names and all those individuals and all those parties until nominations close. Without definitive leadership, the party is split. The issue is, do I believe the Liberal Party should put One Nation below the Labor Party? And in my view, yes. One Nation in the Goldstein electorate has been put dead last. But I'd like to see uh, the One Nation well above uh, the Greens and Labor in, in my electorate for sure. I can't see any reason why One Nation wouldn't be preference last. Well, the Greens, uh, I think, are more dangerous than One Nation in many ways. There will be several parties and people at the bottom of our preference arrangements. In Victoria, it will look different to Queensland. If you are a, a Northern Queensland MP or a Central Queensland MP, you actually need One Nation preferences because a lot of your electorate are quite sympathetic to a lot of their views. Whereas if you're in the South East, their electoral poison. So that has been the problem for the Liberal Party. They can't just come up with a blanket response. In the 2016 election, Labor picked up two seats in Queensland due to One Nation preferences, which were roughly split 50-50 between the Coalition and Labor. But with the government facing a wipeout at this election, is it a matter of every man for himself? Well, Liberal MP Tim Wilson, as you just saw, wants to put One Nation dead last on his card. And he joins us now. Tim, you've clearly made your decision, but why is this such a hard decision for everyone else in the coalition? Oh, I don't think it's a hard decision at all. I think people have made it quite clear that they don't want to do, do any deals with One Nation. I'm just going uh, resolutely and clearly that, you know, amongst extremist parties, I include the Greens, I include One Nation, I want them at the bottom of the ticket. But I don't think we should get obsessed about the focus on preferences. I actually want to beat One Nation and beat them into a political pulp. I don't doubt at all your stance on this, but, but I hear you talk about preference deals, which is not the question. It's not about preference deals. It's about what the coalition decides for itself without any deal being made on its own and on its own ticket. We've seen what they've been accused of today with its relationship with the NRA or a relationship that they thought yeah. they were getting into. We've heard them describe Islam as a disease that needs to be vaccinated. I'm just wondering, what would One Nation have to do for there to be unanimity within the coalition that they should be going after, at the very least, Labor and the Greens? No, we, we, we already have had a long-standing position around uh, putting... You know, John Howard, right back to 1998, said that he wasn't going to support uh, One Nation and put him back to the bottom. But I think what the government is clearly not interested in is getting distracted on this issue because One Nation is doing a very good job of exposing itself to the nation about just how... But if you don't want to be distracted on it, you just call it now, don't you? Well, and, and that's why I've made my position very clear and uh, the Prime Minister has said there will be no deals and I'm going to back him in on saying there are no deals. What we don't want is a situation where One Nation gets any seats in the Parliament. Obviously, we'd rather people from the Coalition were elected instead, uh, but we want mainstream voices in the Australian community standing for Parliament and being elected over uh, these extremists. I appreciate what you're saying, but you, you do know that, that you're not actually answering the question I asked there, don't you? I know that the media likes these sort of gotcha moments and to grab them. I'm sticking very clearly with the position. I'm backing the Prime Minister who said no deals. I've made it clear very much what I'm doing in my seat. I don't go around lecturing other people what they're going to do in their seat, but I'm making it crystal clear so that it's unambiguous from my perspective, and I stand by that. Uh, and I just hope that other people will uh, show the similar resolve. This really isn't about a gotcha moment, Tim. I feel like it's a much bigger moment than that. And so that's why my question was about what do you think that One Nation would have to do to reach a point where it was unanimous within the coalition that they weren't to be preferenced ahead of Labor and the Greens? 
Well, I, I mean, if, uh, there are so many different things that can happen in politics. I mean, there, you just look at what's happened in New South Wales in the past week where you had Michael Daly inflaming racial divisions within the community and some of the comments he's made. Does that mean we should put him lower than one nation now? In this case, I still think Labor, even though I strongly disagree with them, uh, ultimately uh, are a mainstream party. And so these are the sorts of things that always move up and down. But based on the candidates that are likely to stand in the electorate of Goldstein and the candidates that are likely to stand in contest with me, uh, I'm making it crystal clear what my view is. Tim, I'm not sure if you caught Q&A last night, but your uh, <laughs> Liberal Party Vice President, Tina McQueen, made some pretty controversial comments today. The Liberal Party have said that she doesn't speak on behalf of the she coalition. Doesn't. So, OK, but that seems strange uh, considering she is the Vice President. Can you explain that to us? Well, there's the administrative arm and there are people elected to represent the party. She's in the administrative arm. And I think that Tina McQueen has demonstrated that uh, was out of herself as somebody who should at least consider and think again before going on Q&A. All right, Tim, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.